Today, I will be demonstrating the proper way to install your BSN Medical cast saw blade from initial purchase. We'll be using the supplied parts included with your purchase. Included, you will see the two-sided hex wrench, the package blade and saw with spacer and hex nut already on the drive shaft. When attaching the blade to the American Orthopedic cast saw hex, you will first need to remove the nut and spacer from the saw shaft. Next, place the blade onto the shaft. Applying a downward pressure, rotate the blade until you hear a click as the blade sits properly on the hex shape of the shaft. Place the spacer onto the shaft. Then, thread the nut onto the shaft. Using the hex wrench, tighten the nut down onto the shaft as far as you can tighten. When attaching the blade to your American Orthopedic cast saw pin drive, you will first need to remove the nut, washer, and spacer from the saw shaft. The nut will be removed using the large side of the hex wrench provided. The washer, spacer, and nut can be set off to the side for use momentarily. Next, place the blade onto the shaft, putting it down onto the pin so that it sits flush onto the pin shape of the shaft. Place the spacer onto the shaft, being mindful of the slots on the spacer that fit with the pin of the shaft. Next, place the washer onto the shaft, placing on top of the spacer. Lastly, using the hex wrench, tighten the nut down onto the washer on the shaft as far as you can tighten. When the blade teeth are dull, or the blade section is covered in casting product, it's time to rotate your blade. The blade on the American Orthopedic cast saw hex can be rotated six times to allow for use of the entire blade over time. You will first loosen the nut on the saw shaft. The nut will be loosened using the small side of the hex wrench provided. You can remove the nut and spacer completely if this helps visually. Or you can loosen the nut just enough to allow you to move the blade off the hex portion of the shaft to rotate it to the next position on the blade. For the hex cast saw, rotate the blade 60 degrees to the next open position, applying a downward pressure until you hear a click as the blade sits properly on the hex shape of the shaft. Using the hex wrench, tighten the nut down onto the spacer on the shaft as far as you can tighten. The blade on the American Orthopedic cast saw pin can be rotated four times to allow for use of the entire blade over time. You will first loosen the nut on the saw shaft. The nut will be loosened using the large side of the hex wrench provided. You can remove the nut, washer, and spacer completely if this helps visually. Or you can loosen the nut just enough to allow you to move the blade off the pin portion of the shaft to rotate it 90 degrees to the next position on the blade. Make sure the blade sits flush on the pin section of the shaft. The spacer and the washer will then be placed on top of the blade on the shaft, or lower if you did not remove it from the shaft. Using the hex wrench, tighten the nut down onto the washer on the shaft as far as you can tighten. For the initial setup of your American Orthopedic Cast Dust Vacuum, you will see the following in your box. The vacuum, the hose attachment, a straight nozzle kit, a hanger bar, and instructions for use with Velcro cable to wrap up cords. Once all components are removed from the box, you will first remove the lid from the vacuum. 
Then you can slide the hanger bar into the open channel on the back side of the vacuum. The lid can then be placed back onto the vacuum. Next, you will attach the hose end onto the 90 degree elbow fitting at the front of the vacuum. The nozzle kit will be used to connect the hose from the vacuum to your saw. You will have to disassemble before using. First, remove the larger hex screw from the nozzle and black adapter using the hex wrench supplied. When attaching the nozzle for vacuum onto saw, you will first remove your blade from the saw if already attached. Next, you will attach the black nozzle adapter to the saw with the three smaller Torx screws and Torx wrench supplied with the nozzle kit. Once the black nozzle adapter is attached, the blade must be installed. After the blade is installed, you will attach the nozzle to the black adapter. Ensure the blade is in the center of the nozzle opening. Then, using the hex key wrench provided, Tighten the larger hex screw through the nozzle into the black adapter. You will tighten this hex screw as tight as you can with the hex key wrench. Once the nozzle is attached to the black adapter on the saw, you can attach the hose end to the nozzle for use with the vacuum. Now that your components are assembled, you can now connect to a power source. You will plug in the vacuum power cord into the appropriate wall outlet or power supply. On the front of the vacuum, you will see a relay box. This relay box has a toggle switch with three modes. Off, vacuum only, and vacuum saw used together. If you toggle the switch to vacuum only, you will notice the vacuum turns on and suction is established. Place the toggle back into the off position. Then, plug the saw power cord into the relay box. Toggle the switch to vacuum and saw use. Turning on the saw by the switch on the bottom of the saw will power up the device operating both together. To allow for better leverage, start further away from you and start cutting toward yourself using an overlapping method, meaning use half of what you just cut into to further advance the saw. There are three different ways to hold the saw to ensure you have control of the depth. One method is using the thumb method when you place your thumb on the cast as you control your depth. A second method to hold the saw correctly to control your depth is extending your index finger and placing it on the cast as you move toward yourself. The last way is to place the top of your index finger on the cast by rotating your hand around the handle of the saw to ensure that you have direct contact with the cast as you cut simultaneously. When your vacuum seems to have less suction or no suction, it may be time to change your filter. You will disconnect the vacuum power cord from the wall outlet. Remove the lid from the vacuum and remove the plastic caps from the underside of the lid. Those caps are used to cap off both ends of the filter cartridge. That filter can then be discarded in biological waste. With the new filter, you will remove the caps on both ends, then place them into the foam cutouts on the underside of the lid. When you look into the vacuum, after the filter has been removed, you will see a vertical pipe in the bottom corner of the vacuum. This pipe will fit into the opening of the replacement filter cartridge. Holding the filter vertical with the hole facing down, gently insert the filter into the vacuum tower until the filter is sitting snugly in the vacuum tower. If you cannot slide the filter into the tower, please check to make sure you have the hole lined up with the filter pipe in the vacuum. Once the filter is in the vacuum tower, the lid should be placed back on the vacuum. 